Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to install a version of Chrome OS with access to Android apps on your laptop or PC. And to do this, we're going to be using an operating system known as Fide OS. It's a super lightweight operating system based on Chromium OS. And with this, we actually have access to Android apps on our x86 PC, be it a mini PC like you see here, or even a laptop. This will work with Intel or AMD. And in my opinion, it's a great way to repurpose old PCs. Or even if you've got a newer laptop that's slow because, you know, it was a cheaper laptop, like those $100 ones you pick up on Best Buy's Black Friday sales, this would be great on a little setup like that because it is so lightweight. Game controllers do work with this operating system and Android app, so if you did want to connect a wired or even a wireless controller over Bluetooth to play your favorite Android games, you can do that. And of course, it's based on Chromium OS. So in the end, basically, once we're done, we've either got a Chrome box like we have here or a Chrome book. And another cool feature that some of you might be interested in is uh, Linux. So with this, just like the newer versions of Chrome OS, we do have access to a Linux terminal so we can install Linux applications in Fido OS. Overall, it's been a really snappy little system on this cheaper HP PC that I picked up a while ago on eBay, but I've also tested this on a cheaper Intel-based laptop with an N5030, really livened it up, and I can play a lot of Android games on that little system. Now, performance here is really going to depend on how powerful the system is you're installing it on, but for a lot of these Android games, even just a regular old 2000 series AMD APU is able to play all of the Android games that I've tested so far. <laughs> So in order to get this installed, we'll need two things. We're going to need a functioning PC. It could be a Mac, it could be a Linux machine, or even a Windows machine. And we'll also need a USB drive to flash the operating system too. I'm going to walk you through all of the steps on getting this set up from USB. I'm also going to show you how to enable Android and Linux with this operating system. So if you want to get this up and running on an older PC, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so like I mentioned, operating system is really easy to install. Uh, I'm going to go over all the steps that it takes. You can run this directly from a USB drive or an external drive if you want to. But keep in mind, the best experience for this operating system would be an internal drive. I would recommend testing it from USB for a little while just to see if it's something you're going to be using. And then later on, you could install it if you want to. Link for the website is in the description. Lots of great information over here. But we're going to head to the download section. If we take a close look, we've got three different options. Top one is going to be Intel processors with the Intel HD graphics from 3rd gen up to 8th gen. Next up, Iris Xe, so 9th gen to 12th gen. And finally, AMD processors. And I've actually tested this on a 2000 series and a 5000 series. Seems to work out really well. For me, I'm going with AMD, but we do have these other options here depending on what kind of PC you have. I usually do the FIDOS.io download. You can try OneDrive if you want to or iCloud, but I go with their uh, Mirror 2. While we're getting this, let's go ahead and download an application to allow us to easily flash this to a USB drive. This will work with Mac, Windows, or Linux. It's known as Etcher. Download Etcher. And as you can see, we've got the Windows x86, Mac, and Linux. Download the correct version for your PC. And once we have FIDOS and Etcher downloaded, we can actually go ahead and flash this to our USB drive. We'll start up Etcher. It's going to look something like this. We're going to flash from file. We're going to locate the image we want to flash. Mine is going to be the AMD APU version of FIDOS. Next, we're going to select the target, and this is going to be our USB drive. I've got a SanDisk 32 gigabyte drive. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in right now. We're going to choose this. Select and flash. What we're doing here is setting up a bootable USB drive with Fide OS. We can run it from here, but there's also the installer right on that USB drive. So if you do decide to install this to an internal drive, you can do it from the disk we're creating right now. Give this a little while to finish up. Once it's done, we can actually remove the USB drive and move over to the PC we want to run Fide OS on. Okay, so now that our USB drive is ready, we're going to go ahead and plug this into one of the free ports on our PC. It can be a laptop or a mini PC, like I mentioned. We need to get into the boot menu, but uh, more specifically, at least with these newer laptops, we need to get into the BIOS to disable secure boot. I'm using a Lenovo laptop right now, and it's F2 to get into the BIOS, but other manufacturers use different hotkeys. It could be F7, F10, Delete, F9. 
Just take a look online and find out what hotkey your manufacturer uses for the BIOS or even the boot menu. And like I mentioned, on a lot of laptops nowadays, we have something called Secure Boot, and we just can't boot a different operating system from USB unless this is disabled. So find Security, Secure Boot, and we want to disable this. That way we can boot up from that USB drive. And speaking of that, we also want to find our boot order. That way we can set the USB drive as our first boot device. Every time it detects that this USB drive is plugged into the PC, it's going to boot from that USB drive. With this specific laptop, I've tested a lot of different operating systems, so I've got a lot listed here. But what I'm looking for is my SanDisk USB drive, and it's right here at the bottom. We can change this boot order on the Lenovo laptop by pressing F5 or F6 to bring it up or down. We want to bring this to the top of the list, and most manufacturers use both of these hotkeys to bring that order up or down. SanDisk 3.2 Gen 1. I know for a fact that that's my USB drive, and I definitely want to boot from this. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes, save and exit, and now every time this PC boots up, as long as my USB drive is plugged in, it's going to boot from that USB drive into FidoS. Every time FidoS boots up, it's going to bring us to a little grub menu. We do have a few options, but uh, it's actually set up to skip itself after three or four seconds. So you'll always see a couple options here, but we're just going to leave it right there on the first option, and it's going to boot right into FidoS from that USB drive. And we've got the little logo there. Give it a few seconds to initialize, and it'll bring us right into the setup. So the setup here is super easy. It's very self-explanatory, but there are a few little tricks that I want to show you. So first up, we need to choose our region. I'm going to go with US. I can use my trackpad here to click OK. It's already set for me. It's also going to ask you to set up your Wi-Fi network or Ethernet, depending on what you want to use. So go ahead and set your Wi-Fi up. From here, we can run FidoS from the USB or we can install it to another drive. We want to test this out, so we're going to choose the second option just to run it directly from that USB drive. There's a privacy statement here that you can read through. We'll go ahead and agree to the terms. It's going to do a little bit of setup, and now it's going to ask us to sign in. So you could use your Google account, but personally, you know, with third-party operating systems, I don't like using my main Google account. So I'm going to create a local user. This is going to be specifically for this FidoS setup. You can put in a name. Your password is going to be the password to this specific system that you have FidoS running on. Once we have that in there, we'll go ahead and choose Next. We can go with the light or the dark theme, or we can set it up for auto. Personally, I like setting it up for auto. So as soon as we log in, we're going to get a little pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner. This is going to notify us that we can install the Android subsystem right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and we can activate the Android subsystem with FidoS. We're going to agree to the terms. Launch. It's going to take a second. Now this is the first step. This is going to allow us to get the subsystem. But the next thing we need to do is install Google Play, and we can do that with an application that they have over on their store. We can do it all on the PC running FidoS. Just let this finish. Once it's done, you'll see a window that looks something like this. Very reminiscent of Android because this is the Android subsystem. We're going to close this down, and from our application panel, you can see that Google Play isn't installed, but we do have something known as the store. This is the FIDE store. We're going to open this up. Right on the main menu, you should see Configure Open G Apps. I call it GAPS. This is Google Apps. If it's not right there, you can always do a search. But this is going to allow us to install Google Play and everything we need to get Google Play up and running. Add to FIDE OS. Add the app. Now it's installed, and we need to run it. From our application panel, configure G apps. We're going to agree. We want to install. This is going to download and install all of the necessary applications we need to get Google Play up and running in FidoS. We will have to reboot one time in order for this to take effect. So we'll go ahead and choose Reboot Now. I'm now signed in. And I can start downloading my favorite Android apps here. So I'm just going to go with something small. Let's find a top chart game. 
we'll just do this one right here. And as you can see with some of these games, they are optimized for Chromium or a Chromebook so we can use our keyboard. And it tells you right at the bottom. Hover over the very top, we can close that app down, and we can go ahead and download something else. But yeah, this operating system is actually really awesome for repurposing old, less powerful machines that kind of struggle running new versions of Windows. Obviously, with something like this, we can install our favorite AAA PC games, but there's still a lot that can be done. We can actually even download uh, emulators, like uh, PPSSPP here, and I can play my favorite PSP games. Uh, RetroArch is another one that works really well, and I've also been able to get EtherSX2 up and running, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to load a game. I can load the PS2 BIOS. A little more work I need to do just to see what's going on, but it's kind of using a bridge because a lot of those were made for ARM, obviously, with an Android device, and we're running this on an x86 platform. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely explore around a little bit. Uh, from the settings, we can change our display resolution. We can even go up to 120 hertz with the correct monitor or HDMI out on a laptop. On the smaller HP system, I can do 1080, 120, and it functions very well. All links for everything I mention are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.